that is, your interlocking two. Now stretch them right as Soccer and the fifth. Quiet, please. In exactly 15 seconds, we'll be on the air. I felt like a reptile. Like a reptile. I felt like a reptile. Yeah. There we go. Got it? How you doing, dude? How we doing? <laughs> Why don't you take your headphones off? You look like oh. Warren. <laughs> Have you seen my baseball? Yeah, we're, we're working. We're all good. We're all good. Right. So I, we've just we've literally just started recording, and we spoke for what ten minutes? Good, good ten and minutes. Then re- <laughs> realized that we weren't recording. What a pair of boxes! Not oh. my, that's technically your job. I, we spoke longer. I have about a lot headphones. of jobs. Yeah. I have a lot. You've got to remember the weekend I've just had, right? Yeah. I went. I, w- I was a very exciting news. BT Sport. I'm not going to say any more, but the people in the UK are in for a treat very soon. We've got, we've got a new show coming out on BT Sport soon. Oh, I know all about that. Yeah, you do secretly. You don't. Yes, I can't say anymore. I'm about to say yeah. I, do. Um, I was thinking, oh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> um, so we had um, late night with the Raptors editing on Friday night after the Cage Warriors weigh-ins. Okay, we've got a couple of shows we're working on. Shall I tell them about Dual Symphonies? I reckon, yeah, Dual Symphony is coming out soon. Okay. The first episode, it's, it's a wicked little, it's like three, four minute videos. As long of, as I can see it before everyone else. Fight. You, you, can, right. you can, I'll show you after. Yeah, I want You lot will get it soon. It'll be a nice treat for you. Okay. You can look forward to it, like Christmas Day. There you go. Um, Cage Warriors on Saturday. Yeah. So I was there from the beginning. I watched all the fights. James Hendon fought on the undercard, cornered him, looked amazing. Didn't really need much instruction. He's very, very... Mature. I mean, I think he's like 21, 22. Yeah. He, he acts like he's been fighting his whole life. Mate, it's he looked, amazing. He looked badass. All, yeah. all I wanted... Have we already spoke about me trying to get a picture of his uh, T-shirt? Was we that recording. when we, we when we realised we weren't recording? That was the first that time, was wasn't the it? That was the time, okay. yeah. So that's what made us think. So the, the reason I water. say that... I think I'm dehydrated. Yeah, it's maybe. Been a long weekend. I basically... I was watching the fight and I was thinking this would be perfect for social. I just need to get a screenshot of that shirt. Just him bouncing about. But he was that giddy. He was jumping up and down. And the only shot I could get was Dean undressing him. And it looked proper ropey. I was like, mm, don't want to put that out there because it looked all right. But at the same time, you're getting undressed by Dean. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I but yeah, I, I was impressed at how quick Dean was with the T-shirt after the fight. <laughs> yeah, straight on. Like, straight on. I don't even think he put it over, over his arms. and It's like the old Wallace and Gromit. It was like, cut it up the <laughs> seams and stitched it around him quickly. It was quite straight impressive. On. Um, so Cage Warriors, finished that, jumped in my car, drove straight over to the IMG Studios commentated for UFC 235, 235, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So that was 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And then straight after that, I jumped on Sirius XM to chat with Jimmy Smith about the fights that had just happened. Wow. And then I drove home. And trying to avoid those micro sleeps when you hit the, the yeah. alarm clock on the side of the Them road. big blinks. Yeah, I'm not a fan of big blinks. Turn up. I get, I get some chewing gum in, a load of water. And... Yeah, you said chewing gum's the trick for you. I don't know I why. Just, I drink cold water and have deft tones cranked. Yeah. See, I used to have a lot That's of... The cranking of death tones. Okay, up to 11. Do you like my... Up to 11. <laughs> yeah. Spinal tap reference. We I, love a spinal tap. I do tap like... Reference. I do like having my music on when I'm driving, but I used to do a lot of miles. Mm-hmm. So it was one of them where... I don't know what it is. If I put a chewing gum in, it's like I have to start concentrating on not choking, which is crazy, but it works. <laughs> chewing gum and satsumas. Concentrate on not choking. Yeah. That'll keep you awake while you're driving. You know, that you sounds get, safe. Yeah, get a bag of satsumas as well. You have to try and peel it with one hand. It gives you something to focus on when I'm driving. I'm physically peeling it now on end. I've got a good technique. I'm good. Can you do that whilst tying a cherry bing? I thought my favourite was like the word bing. It's a, that's what I call bing. my daughter, bing. The, yeah, the, the, the stalk off a cherry? Yeah. That's a bing. Interesting. I'm not wrong with the random the facts. Yeah. Fact of the day. We'll put that along the bottom. Fact of the day. We'll need a ticker tape. Do, 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 yeah, fact, fact of the day is a bing. Well, my daughter, I call her bing. You do? I don't know why. You don't know why. I, I, all my pets and kids have got nicknames. <laughs> I don't know necessarily where they come from. My fact of the day is normally, what do you call a single scampi? You know, I had scampi and chips at the weekend for Nana Dot's birthday. So, do you know what a single scampi is called? Scampi? Scampo. Scampo. How so you, could it possibly don't be? I don't know, but when I got down to my last one, I was like, oh, you're the only scampo left. <laughs> People looking at me going, I was like, what? Got some tartar sauce? You need your own dictionary. Piece? Yeah. We'll, we'll have to, it's we'll have it's to a fact, though. It's, it's real. It can't it's legit. Real. It is, honestly. I'm not buying that at all. Google it. <laughs> scampo. Just <laughs> no one single... Singles like scampies out there chilling. 
To be fair, though, I that think... That sounds like nonsense. No, I think the worst thing was that I was blagging about knowing this thing called Scampo, and then I looked down, and it looked like two scampies had joined and made one. So, you know, like when you get an oversized breaded scampi, and I was like, I've been calling you a Scampo for ages, and really, you're a double dutch. Here's one for you. A peanut M&M with two peanuts in it. Oi. Is an M&M M&M. &M. <laughs> it is. Right? Yeah. M&M and &M &M. That's a good week. Yeah. That's like, a, that's, like, that's like bonus material when you get into... You, you only get them in the big bags, really, as well. Very rare do you get a yeah, peanut it's M &M. not Yeah. It's been a while or since... Or you get like a, a solid M &M. one, or you get like a Kit Kat when you try and... You know when you bite the end off a Kit Kat? And it's almost before the solid wafer. chocolate. Yeah. 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 Result. You, yeah. But back in the day, we didn't have social to brag about that. Could no. you imagine if you literally... You'd film the whole thing. You but now it's just you word would. of mouth. You talk People to your mates, you go, I had a solid Kit Kat. That's didn't a, even question that's it. That's a new channel for the YouTube uh, YouTube network, isn't it? A new word show. Yeah, solid like, Kit Kats. Yes, solid Kit Kats. That's it. That's reviewing, a game attack. Reviewing uh, sweets, chocolate, candy for Which, everybody in the US. What made us talk about Stefan on the first I record? Don't I don't remember. Something to do You mentioned Stefan. You were talking about his banner. I was mentioning his banner because it was the first time I'd done, I'd got my logo on his banner. And when we sent it out to Japan, Japan, we really like we didn't realize because he was almost like we've rehearsed this. Yeah, for real. The Raptors are laughing. They think it's hilarious. Because he's because he was against Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt was like he was he was at home when he was fighting in Japan. Yeah. So when we sent it, we sent two pairs of shorts, a pair of walkout shorts, and a pair of and a pair. Of weighing shorts. I'm sure. I'm Mike Police. You've you seen are that on Mike the Police, yeah. podcast as well. Me and Mark are going to have a word one day. <laughs> Gang up on you. If you two did a podcast, we wouldn't hear half you, of you it. Wouldn't that be fucked? It'd just be random swear. It would be nonsense. <laughs> Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> so the, you get two pairs of shorts, a pair of walkout shorts and a pair of weighing shorts when it was the sponsors, not necessarily now. Pre-Bock. Yeah, pre-Bock. Pre-Bock. Nice. Pre-Bock. So we sent out to Stefan and they kept it at... At customs because they didn't want to give it him because they preferred Mark Hunt mm. and it was a massive thing that they just wouldn't let it out there was nothing wrong with it we didn't send that many drugs so we had to print another one and send it out and then I always felt like I was his unlucky charm because it's the first time my logo was on his banner and he got biffed in the third didn't he yeah that's an unfortunate gif you still got you still saw the banner though I saw my banner a bit yeah there you go have you got it printed out in your bedroom yeah, wall real. yeah, it's on your yeah bedroom literally wall, just that it? corner <laughs> <laughs> whose is that knee Stefan Struz yeah maybe, maybe that'd be a good name for the uh, for the show that we're working on you know the the, the fight show where we watch old fights yes we could call it the pre book review pre book re yeah I like that you know because to we, be fair majority do, of them will be pre book focus on UFC pre re -book. yeah like old school pre re -book post Post glove, because you know, I still want to know what what give you, what UFC was it? What about Art where Jimison, UFC? He had one glove on. Does that not count? Art Jimison. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the way I love his, his reasoning. I didn't know he could go to the ground. No. Where is that glove now? Can you imagine how much it'd be worth? Oh mate, yeah, about eight quid. <laughs> I'd buy it for eight quid. Add yeah, it to the glove wall. Fair, the glove Art wall. Jimison, if you have that one glove that you fought at, what UFC was that? One. There we go. Brain box. Oh no. If if we can locate that glove. Yeah, I def yeah we definitely have it. Yeah. Can you imagine I'd, that? I'd make a nice glass box. I'd put it next to the Raptor, next to the Raptor rig with a, a in a glass box. It'd be nice. Right behind your head there. How many people do you think when he was training for that fight and he kept coming out and he was like, right, just one glove on, where they're going, yeah, this is a wicked idea. And then when did he make the decision like, though? What the fuck? That's the question. Did he make the decision during training camp? Did he train with one glove on? Or did he do training camp with two gloves? And then when he got there, it was like, so I don't have to wear gloves. So I can grab him with this hand and, and punch him with this him. one. Yeah, fucking why not? But that's a that's a obvious case of not reading terms and conditions mm. before agreeing. <laughs> Do you that know is. what I mean? We're working on disclaimers although, quite a lot at the minute with the gym. Every time I sign up to something with Apple, I, I could be agreeing to a you know a fight yeah, to the death fair. with one boxing glove on. I, I think I, I do own my firstborn. <laughs> I never read those terms and conditions. Yeah. Nobody does. You owe me half your they dog. Probably own all of this. Yeah, for real. So that was I can't remember how we got there, but we've covered it because I thought it was interesting. Yeah. So shall we talk about two, three, five? Because there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, well, we, uh, I was in transit during the early prelims, so I've okay. kind of watched a couple of those in in review. Um, I did land at the ING Studios just in time to see old man Sanchez put a beating on Dude. Kid, Kid Gaul. What Mate, outstanding! What happened there? I was Mickey Gaul's almost twice the size and half the age, and and half with, the energy with a tenth of the fight experience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and half the energy. Yeah, I just think Mickey Gaul just I think he'd written him off. He's like, it, I'm I'm going to get you out of there. He's going to smash him to pieces. And Diego just went old school. He just bit down. He's like, all right. And he even said afterwards, he's like, he's going to punch himself out. And he did. He just nailed him. He yeah. looked wicked. Here, here's, here's a question for you. In fact, I think we should put this out to the, to the general public. Go on. 
on the uh, the press uh, no not the press conference media day the media day face offs yep. Diego showed up with his with his Steven Seagal bandana on and he had a bag on he had a little bag a little man bag on his back what's in there exactly what do you think's in there if you got three guesses of three things that Diego Sanchez has got in there what, I what reckon do you think? he's got a Chihuahua called Guapo okay a sombrero for that Chihuahua. A, a Chihuahua-sized t- sombrero. Yes. Oh, it's not going to be. It's not going to be oversized. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> a toothbrush. A Kinder egg. Oh, hang on a minute. Well, th- now that's four. But we oh, wouldn't right. have a Kinder egg because you can't get them outside the UK and I think Switzerland or something. So. Diego, don't fuck around. If that's he wants true. a frosty froggy, he will have a frosty froggy. <laughs> He's got the full say. He doesn't give a fuck. No one's going to get I, that I, reference. I, I couldn't fine. help but think that all the way through the rest of the face-offs. My my only thought what's was what's in that bag? What's in Diego Sanchez's bag? Maybe it's a bit what like would he, Pulp what would he need on stage, like if necessary during the face off. I've got it in the bag. Don't worry. Yeah, it's in there. The Maybe if we looked at like a lightning door. rod. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know something like that. Anyway. Maybe he had a Chewbacca <laughs> dressing gown packed up. Do you like it? It's beautiful, man. I'm, I'm surprised we've got this far into the podcast without mentioning it. Yeah, to be fair, I think on the first couple of takes. There you go. Right. And for audio. Right. That's the one thing I can do. Anyway, I wish Diego had done that when he won, because he sent really he sent fine when he won, and he and he put the did put you the show hear, in. Did you hear his first thing that he said to Joe Rogan though? That his obsession something about him in his early twenties. It was his obsession was anti aging. Yeah, and like, now I'm going to get back into that. Like yeah. he's got a formula. It, what are you doing for the next ten years? I'm going to fight. Then I'm going to finish this billion dollar idea. Yeah, do it the other way around. He's, no, he's definitely going to live to 180 or something. He's fucking great. What I think th- he's. I think he's able to channel the like the lightning storms. You remember he was doing in that season on one fighter house. Yeah, he was yeah. terrifying. That's why, that's why he won the show, mate. To be fair, and I mean even when you look back, if you watch that fight against Ken Flo, what, weren't they both heavyweight or something insane? Something like. That. That no, middleweight. it was middleweight. Yeah, it was they middleweight. were still yeah, ridiculous yeah. for what they're it fighting was. at now. But it was when he'd won, and he was like, yeah, see you later. And then next minute, there's a picture on Instagram, and we're going, that motherfucker bit me. Yeah. And he gouged my eyes. Yeah. Piece of shit. And you're like, all right. Dirty. Yeah, Playground fighting. Yeah. Playground th- fighting with teeth. I think I think Mickey, he didn't look good, did he? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No. What about Johnny Walker? What Dude, about my boy. the shoulder dislocation caterpillar that he did? Yeah, who was it saying that See he'd that? done a worm kick? Does that, does that look right from there? I feel like that looks right from there. That's my Johnny. There you go. There we go. One of them. Yeah. Oh, uh, and then the point where you go boom, pop and dislocate your shoulder. Yeah, well, it's not even a good celebration. We spoke about this no. before. It's no. like you're putting too many too many functions on a PowerPoint document. Just well, when you knock somebody out with a flying knee in 30 seconds, you, you could. Li- the best thing to do is literally just stand on the spot. It was the noise it made. Did yeah. you hear the, the crack? What, on the knee or on the, uh, on the shoulder knee. pop? The shoulder oh, no. part not so yeah. much. The knee was filth. Yeah. But yeah, I reckon he's ready, man. He's definitely, yeah, all day. I, I'm I'm campaigning for him to be de- fighting for the next title. You, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, yeah, hang on. All day. The Raptors agree. The Raptors yeah. agree. What about uh, Thiago Santos, though? Maheta. I don't know, man. I think I think someone with a game plan beats Santos all day. And do you think Johnny Walker has a game plan? Nope. Johnny, I don't know. John <laughs> Jones does. So who beat, who wins out of that, that fight then? What, Johnny, Johnny Walker, Walker against Santos? Santos? Um, I don't know. It depends if you can close the distance. Has Johnny Walker got a nickname? Whiskey. <laughs> That's not, not his case. nickname. Crazy horse. I don't think he's got a nickname, has he? <laughs> Let me have a look. Johnny Walker needs a nickname. Johnny huh? Walker needs a nickname. He doesn't have a nickname. Johnny Walker needs a nickname. The Brazilian. Fire up the, <laughs> fire up the bat symbol. Yeah, he needs a cool nickname though. I mean, he's... The what? <laughs> worm kick. <laughs> yeah, who said that? Someone said that in the press conference. I've never like, heard of it. doing the worm him. kick and I was like, it's not a thing. That's like someone who's yeah, only just started watching the UFC and goes, I was watching it, right? And this geezer came in, he did a knee kick. And he's like, what? <laughs> a flying knee kick. I reckon, like, no, no, I reckon Dana did some, some break dancing back in the day. Do you reckon he had he a piece of cardboard? Like kind of, for sure. Do you reckon he's got a big piece of cardboard folded up in the back of his car? Adidas. He's always rocking the Adidas, you know? I think so. I think he was a... My Adidas, I think. Huh. Run DMC. I'm going to speak to my boxing coach, Jimmy Gifford. He he knew he knew uh, Dana back in the day. Do you I, I bet he's got some old breakdancing got a, photos a, a, of Dana. A furry Kangol. Oh, for sure, a furry Kangol. Like not even furry. Like an though, egg like, cozy. Not even furry Kangol. <laughs> like like the like the toweling kind. Yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. The, the furry one, like, yeah. but the bucket hat. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's 17. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I can see that. And keep his head warm. 
you look, you look cold, Dana. Magomed Sharapov against Stevens. Yeah. Enjoy it? Good I fight. did. I, I did. I just, I thought that Zabit was going to, I thought he was going to do a bit more because obviously, but it was, it was dangerous the whole time. But there was a couple of times when Stevens just missed and I was yeah. like, oh, easy. But I think then Dominic Cruz just put that <laughs> monotone sort of. Yeah. I, I didn't been, hear a lot of I'd Joe in that. Screaming through it. Uh, yeah, well, it's his teammate. And he's yeah. like, yeah, what he needs to do is not that. He doesn't, I think- <laughs> he, he doesn't need to do that. What he needs to do is put this together. How exciting is that? And it's like, come on, dude. Like, please, just get a bit think, jazzed about yeah. something. I think Joe gets less excited at the fights when, when Cruz is sitting next to him. Yeah. I think I think Joe's like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, good shot. Right, yeah. Dom, right, Dom. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like shot. when you start a new job. But where, not- whereas if like if, if Rogan's there on his own, he's like jumping off the walls. Yeah. 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 Well, like, put like it this dark, way. Like dark red. Like, ah. Is- like um, Henry Rollins. Okay. Yeah, anyway, carry on. It's all right. <laughs> Some people will get that reference, and that one was for you people. <laughs> now wink. <laughs> King. Carry on. Is Dominic Cruz invited to the Fight Companion? What? Which ones? For for them? For Joe Rogan? I don't no, know. He's not, is he? Because he's know. a mood hoover. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Everyone else is sat there rolling. Callan's bringing in the wine. Ezy Bra's got the cheese. Brendan's just learning how to roll a joint. Uh, he's got backy everywhere, weed on the floor. Joe's rolling his eyes, and then Dom opens his eyes. Like, Hi guys! Oh, Talking about oh. flat Earth. Conversation about flat Earth. It is full flat Earth, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you've, have you watched that Beyond the Curve? Beyond the Curve, behind the curve. I've watched Some how they curve, debunked no themselves. Flat Earth. You've got to watch it on Netflix. It's it's. I don't get it. I have a good friend who's a flat Earther, and I I need a good conversation with him about it. Yeah, the thing is, I think with. It's, it's like a lot of things like religion and stuff like that. It's always tricky to get into because it's like you don't... Religion, tricky to get into. Yeah, yeah because... So that's that, a good that's, review. That's, yeah, that's, the, just, that's review. the tagline. Tricky to get into. Tricky. <laughs> but the reason is, is that you've got no knowledge of my opinions on, I don't know, fish finger sandwiches, <laughs> right? Because it doesn't fucking matter. Like, yeah, if I'm all about them... Um, What's I, fish finger... Fish hey, finger sandwiches have got nothing to do with flat earth. Apart and religion. from the fact that they're has, flat. Yeah, trust no. me. Trust me. The fact that if I'm super offended by fish finger sandwiches or I fucking love fish finger sandwiches doesn't make a difference in our relationship. <laughs> but the difference is with stuff like religion and flat earth, some people feel it's important to tell you what they feel, even though I don't give two fucks. And that's where I get a problem because it's one of them where I'm not interested my, myself in the first place because I'm too busy for shit like that. But when someone throws that shit at me and they're like, oh, flat earth, I'm like, why? <laughs> why Like, why would it be a thing? <clears throat> did you see the poll I put out? I did. Be- I'm going to pull the numbers up. The current numbers at time of recording. Okay, this is uh, 5.45 on Monday. Monday, yeah. When are we putting this up? Soon, right? Ish, soon-ish. Thursday-ish, yeah. 3,796 votes so far. Yeah. There's still two days and three hours to go. 8% of people think it's an interesting theory. Okay. And then I've got 31% think it's a mental problem. Okay. And 61% think it's the end of common sense. This is what I'm saying. It's the end of the world as, as we, we know, know it. Flat earth as <laughs> we know it. But I was saying to you earlier, right, when it comes to lying... 8%. I don't like lying in any way. Like with the kids, I say to them, if you tell me the truth, even though even if you've been a shit cake, tell me the truth... <laughs> And it's a all shit good. Cake. Yeah, you know when they've just when they've oh, just done something. Cake. What a shit cake. Just been a little shit bird. They've just been I've never just, heard just that been before. rubbish for whatever reason. Or they've done something like they've smashed something of mine. And <laughs> instead of saying, I don't know what happened, it's like you're the only one in the room, the telly's broke. <laughs> just tell me what you've done and I can fix it. It's fine. But don't lie. So if you ever have lied. That was me, by the way. I broke the Yeah, I broke the Blamed together. it on the kids. Yeah, that's it. Just move, take the fall for yeah. this one. Yeah, I was bird. playing with the nunchucks <laughs> inside. I was watching yeah. Nick Diaz do it online. I was like, how's he doing that? Do how's you see him standing How's he so the- jerky? <laughs> it's because he's baked. You need to be more baked. More baked. <laughs> but anyway. when you lie, <laughs> if, you, if there's more than one of you involved in a lie, it's really fucking hard to keep it going, right? So, like, when it comes to theories like Flat Earth and, and Scientology and all this other shit, I find it really hard that they're keeping this lie up. It's insane. Like, 
I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm not really religious or anything. But if you, you can believe what you want, it's when you start imposing that on someone else. Mm-hmm. That's what I got an issue with. Yeah. But I find it really insane. That someone's like, I think it's just like someone walked into a bar and they were just saying outlandish shit to see what they get to stick. And like literally finishing his pint and go, Earth's flat. And someone going, what? There, there was you, a guy on the Earth's flat. There was a guy on the show. You've got to watch it. You've I will watch it. I will watch it. We'll pick it up next time at yeah, the podcast. I'll, I'll definitely I'm watch sure it. I'm sure some people out there have already watched it on Netflix. Screaming at the thing now. It's, it's fucking real. It's ridiculous. There was this one guy. So I'm I'm not saying that this is a this is a, an odd coincidence or anything, but he spends most of his day figuring out how to bounce balls on mallets. He's done that side of his house, like bang, 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 like bouncing these, re- reciting, reciting the states. Is this before and after work, or is this because he's mentally I think signed off? Work somehow. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think, yeah. I, think I think he's managed to make that work somehow. I'm not saying that's got a bearing on anything. No, 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 no. But there was a point where he walked up to a woman. Unfortunately, this woman, and this is another reason why I would never own a convertible car because people can get to you even with the windows <laughs> up. Shut the window, we like, can't. He walked up to this woman sitting in a convertible with the windows up, which means don't talk to me. Yeah, I'm busy, bro. Even if there's no roof. Yeah. And obviously he's standing. He leans over the window and he goes, hi, can I ask you something? The earth's flat. I'm like, that's not a question. Yeah, that's not asking anyone anything. <laughs> and he was so aggressive with, yeah, yeah, believe it or not, earth's flat. And what did she do? Uh, well, she just, she just sat uncomfortably. <laughs> Unfortunately for her, she was, I noticed she was in the passenger seat. Jesus. So wherever the driver was, not available to make a quick, quick exit. No. Nah. I just, who, th- who will offer the UFC 235 card? You see how I circled that back around? I'm I've learning. still got questions, I've got to be honest, but no, I will watch it. No, I will talk I'm, I'm about it no Don't take any more questions Earth. from me because it's <laughs> twisting my brain. I've actually just put out for questions. Okay. So we'll see if anybody comes. What do you think about Flat Earth? What do you think to Cody Stammen? Uh, I haven't had a chance to watch you that watch one, that one yet. Yet. No, right, Apparently one of, he was very disappointed with the decision, with the, with his performance. You, well, he came out Perez beforehand saying, I'm going to smash him. I'm going to take mm. him to pieces. I'm just going to murder him. And he, and he sort of didn't. He saw, it, it was one of them where it's a super wrestler that shoots him for a shot, can't get it, and then it seems to take their soul. It's weird that like there were a few fights on the card that just didn't seem to really show up on the night. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I do. I know exactly what you're talking about, but yeah. But I mean, like, to, like the main anchor main event. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I, I would I, after watching those two fights, I'm kind of interested to see Kamaru Usman against John Jones. Yeah, you know what I mean, <laughs> I th- uh, it was like, Tyron Woodley just didn't look didn't look himself at so all. Not interested. I w- th- there's not even an excuse, and Tyron's amazing for excuses. He's got excuses for days normally, and this time he was just like, no, it's just one of them days. And I was yeah. like, but the problem is, I don't feel that Dana ever wanted him to be champ. So the fact of him trying to get another shot now is going to be even harder because even if he wins five in a row, Dane is still going to find a reason why not to give him the shot because mm. he was bored of him being champion. Yeah, well, we're going to get we're going to get Kamara Usman against Covington next. I mean, uh, uh, Woodley was was talking about a rematch at the press conference, like saying that you know what he's done at welterweight is deserving of an immediate rematch. Yeah, but I just give you Aldo. I give you Aldo and Connor. Yeah, and he wasn't even considered. Yeah, for a rematch. Yeah, you would have thought so. Well, mate, we've said it before. The Gray Maynard Stipe. and Frankie Edgar days are over. There's, yeah, right. You don't get them immediate rematches. No. But then, so like, if if Tyron Woodley's got to fight one more person before he gets a title shot, who are you looking at? The winner of Till Masvidal? Um, yeah, I don't mind that. But I don't know. I, I, I'd like to see Robbie and um, Askren again. No, Robbie and Ooh. Woodley again. Yeah. Yeah. I think Robbie had that thing where he was flying high, he was doing good, he was looking good for doing it, and he was just unstoppable. Robbie um, looked like a demon, like, like he was possessed. Did you see him when he walked out? That was like, I said it, I was doing radio commentary for the BBC, and I, I said it on that, he looks like Robbie Lawler of like 21 years old. Yes. When he made, when, when was his UFC debut? It was like UFC 30 something, 38 33? or... Or was it 36? It was, it was early, it was, yeah, it was, it was you, really early. I'll find it. Cause Go on, do it, do it. 37. UFC 37. Aaron Riley. Aaron Riley. Yeah. No, that's not the one I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about UFC 40. Tiki. Yeah. Was that, was that Vendetta? Yes, when he punched the floor. Oh, man. Punched the floor of the canvas and he broke it. And, and Tiki's like dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But like that same intensity. I've not yeah. seen him have that same intensity for a while. It looked like he was walking out with a headset on and all it was saying was breathe in and breathe out. <laughs> Because he didn't seem to be able to I, focus on anything else. If he had, if he had a headset on, he was listening to Cannibal Corpse as he was walking. Yeah, out. maybe. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like veins across the front of his deltoids. Like, mate, 
Well, he was he held it together well. Yeah, he looked great. I mean, his takedown offense as well, straight away. Mate, it was the slam. There, it, it was. It was just that yeah. whoop. See ya. <laughs> but to be fair, I don't know. I was gutted because. I love Robbie. He's one of my favourite fighters. Mm. And then when I saw him come out, and he was like, he went straight in for that that clinch, and it was like, all right, fair enough. And then Robbie got out of that and just laid down some absolute yeah. filth. And then the problem is, it's not Ben Askren's fault that it's been stopped. What, so what are you what are you thinking then? Was it stopped early? Was Robbie Lawler out? No. Uh, the thing is, his hand dropped suspiciously. If that makes sense. Mm. It wasn't it wasn't a controlled I'm gonna no. put my hand on the floor. It was a it, it was looked unconscious. an unconscious drop. Mm. The minute that the hand was touched, it was lifted up off the canvas and not put that back down. So it wasn't yeah. like the ref shaking Ultimate Warrior's hand and dropping it. <laughs> it was literally he touched it and he's and it stayed up. Yeah. If but, Herbert had picked it up and we'd have got some of the got some power know, and then yeah. he started shaking the cage, that'd been wicked. Yeah. But the problem was that should be the only time you can grab the cage when you're showing the referee that you're yeah, still alive. I've still got the power. <laughs> the difference is, is Herb touched his hand to see if it would react. It did react, but he still stopped it. Okay, so l- let me. You know, I wonder if we can s- s- nick this little bit and put it in and just slow this down because I- I've watched it back a few times and I'm only remembering right now from my mind's eye, which might not be 100% correct because okay. I was tired when I watched it several times, but... Tired. Tired. No, I was. I was, exa- I was up all night. I was up all night. Anyway, there was... So, I'm Ben Askren, right? Yeah. Wookie, Wookie Askren. Yeah. Although, hang on, hang on. Is that more like Ben Askren? Yeah, you, you're going to have to get way more out of shape. <laughs> We're going to have to make you out of Play-Doh. <laughs> yeah, he looks, it looks strange, doesn't it? Anyway, we won't get into that right We're now. We're not going to body I, shame I don't him. want him to wrestle me into the camera. No, I'm not going to body shame him. Um... So Askren's here in the body lock, right? As as Herb reached in to check at Robbie Lawler's arm, a part of me thought that Ben Askren thought he was reaching in to stop the fight because he'd already decided that so Lawler he was released out. So, so Lawler, he released if he was out. Exactly. Okay. So the point where Herb reached in and grabs his arm, as he lifts it, uh, Askren just releases a tiny bit and he just gets a little bit of air in. That's why his arm kind of picked back up a little bit. That's my Maybe. theory. I think he was out. I think he was out. I think if Herb hadn't have reached in to check his arm at that moment, he would have been clearly out. Yeah. My initial thoughts when I saw the hand drop was he's out. Mm. And I was and I was fucking gutted. I was like, no, yeah. come on, Robbie. You just spiked him and then beat the shit through him. No. Please don't be out. And it was the way that Robbie stood up. And this just all credit to Robbie. Because back in the day, Robbie was a, a, like a government project. He was a, he was he was a, a fucking monster. psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that he got up, looked at Herb, went fuck me man what and Herb was like oh and he went, oh right, dude no that's worries the, this is the point to put the clip in dude and embraced him yes That's so fucking cool because literally it I, was yeah it takes me longer to let go of like someone not putting the bin out at home mm. do this, you know what I mean yeah. and, and he just changed Robbie's career Robbie's got a loss now to shit burger McGee <laughs> and she, He's fucking, and he just took it on the chin. He was like, all right, fair enough. And just embraced Herb. I was like, where did that come from? Who's that? Shitburger (laughs) McGee. I'm just on Robbie's side at this point and I'm fucked off for him. So Ben Askren's got to take a bit of the brunt. So it could have been fucking Johnny Two Walk. I don't know. Fucking some name would have come out. (laughs) We need to start gathering these up on the screen. Yeah. Just slowly covering the whole screen. How many times did you mention? Throughout the playlist, throughout the podcast. (laughs) How many times did you mention Mick Spunk? (laughs) I don't know. Twice. Um, I played you the clip of the uh, the commissioner at the, uh, the press awesome. conference Can you play afterwards. It? Can you play it now? I think I've still got it pulled up. Shall we... Uh... I like how confused he was. <laughs> I like the fact that he w- he wasn't going to say... What yeah, but it, it's said. not like he said, I'm I'm not going to say, I'm not going to repeat what he said. <laughs> and then, and then someone says, yeah, go on. I fucking <laughs> dare you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, oh shit. There we go. Play it. I'm not going to repeat what Robbie said, what, but he, what the fuck, but man? he stepped up oh, and said, what the fuck? to that effect. <laughs> it's not even like someone challenged him. <laughs> I fucking dare you. Yeah. <laughs> Go yeah. say it. No, I'm not going to say it. Well, I am going to say it. Yeah, at least get a I bit like of a heckle. It. I like him. Yeah, he reminds good. me of the uh, the general of Apocalypse Now. Okay. You know, when, they come, when they come flying in the yeah. helicopters, he's the, you either fight or surf guy. Yeah, just the old boy. I yeah. like it. Um, but yeah, so the thing was, to take away from that, I would watch it again. I don't know. Robbie looked strong. He looked intense. He looked like he could have won it. But 
I genuinely thought he was out mm. initially when I first saw yeah. it, but the problem was I didn't want him to be out. So when yeah. I saw the hand, I reevaluated. It's that replay thing. It's a fucker again mm. because it, it just keeps making you doubt yourself. But the other thing as well, just such on the replay, when a fighter gets knocked out and then sees the replay immediately, they know what happened. Exactly. If they don't see the replay straight away, they probably won't be able to tell you what Do happened. Do you have to cover their eyes then? It, Do you run well, up to Robbie and like, cover his fucking eyes? Well, what happened, thing, Robbie? Like, he, was, uh, oh, he was punching me. Nah, headlock, sorry. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, if Robbie hadn't have seen the replay between the end of the fight and the press conference, he may not have been so certain about what had yeah, happened. Yeah, that's true. Like, by that point, you've, t- you've had time to sit down. So, th- so picture this. It was what? There, were, there, was the co- there were two, mo- two more fights after that. So, there were, you know, in that point, Robbie Lawler was taken straight back to his uh, backstage. Sat he down. was checked by the medics. Yeah. Uh, he was signed off. He was taken back to his dressing room. And then he's sitting in his dressing room with his coaches... Yeah, having a discussion about what happened, and they're all on his side. So they're all saying, "No, no, you were definitely they're just you filling, were definitely, a, filling the blanks, filling in the blanks." And then then he arrives at the press conference and already has a story of this is what happened. I wasn't. I I think I think he was. Maybe I agree. I agree. Well, the, it was the two takeaway was the fact that Robbie stood up, fucking seething for like a split second, embraced Herb and was like, "Ah, oh, fuck it." Even when Askren was announced the winner, he was a clapping. Yeah. And so, to Lawler for handling it like Robbie that. Robbie did that. And then Ben Askren looked at him and was like, oh, you don't handle a win like that. You do it like this. And just came out with his utter... <laughs> like, even Dana in the press conference, they were like, why'd you hate him? And he's like, I don't fucking hate him. And he's like, yeah, he's trying to start a bit of back and forth with you. And he's like, yeah. don't want back and forth. There are a couple of fights at the moment that are like trying to initiate drama with Dana because they feel like it's healthy for their careers. I mean, the obvious one, obviously, Colby. Colby. Did you what see him going into the, the, in the casino? casino? And Dana was just basically yeah. like, "Stop filming, yo, yo, don't film me, stop filming." <laughs> yeah, and almost, you know, when your mum look, your mum used to be able to look at you that way as if to say, "Pack it up." Yeah, and it was, it was. Uh, I still get it now. I try it with my kids, and they're like, "What's that face, <laughs> dickhead? <laughs> Chill out." But the thing is, it's like with the with the back and forth, they almost act like it's like. When you're trying to come, like trying to win over your new girlfriend's dad or something, you know what I mean. You're trying to, you're trying to. <laughs> it's like it's like Dana's the dad and Ben Askren's like just trying to start something just to get a bit of fucking something. And bit of reaction. He just doesn't care. He's like, you're not going to last long <laughs> with my daughter. You're going to be here a couple of <laughs> He's weeks. Robbie Lawler, Dana's daughter. Is that what you say? Maybe because he took it like a yeah. champ. I don't know. I just thought I thought Robbie came out of that looking way better and like the winner. Yeah, he, he did. He, it was the best. I mean, obviously until until the end of the fight, he looked he looked dangerous. He looked vicious. Like that version of Robbie Lawler that walked out to that fight. I would like to see him fight a whole bunch of welterweights. Yeah, exactly. The fight before that, it's I was like, oh, you know, maybe maybe he was thinking about fishing. He was thinking about fishing with his son. He was. You could tell yeah. because what did upset me is he didn't come out to Sam and Dave. What's that? Did you know? Hold on, I'm coming. The song he walks out to. You know when no. he was champ. You can put this in. Oh, right? okay. That's what he came out to. I don't yeah, know. I'm not going to sing it word for word because I'm not quite got that soul rhythm. But yeah, he. I don't uh, believe you. I think you have. Yeah, okay. I'll, I think you have. I'll wax it in later. But he didn't come out to it. He didn't come out to hold on, I'm coming. So what did he come out to then? What did he come out to? Something shit. In really? comparison, it was way more mellow. It, but to be fair to him, because he, he came out looking really intense, it probably. I'd have come out to Tyron Woodley's new single. Just to beat him to it. Did you watch it yet? <laughs> Have you seen Just, it? No, I haven't. Oh, mate. I haven't. Yeah, it's like a really... It's like some lads who are slightly into grime clubbed together and bought a shit GoPro and hired out a photo studio for like 45 minutes. Really? And they, you know when they all just all stand around like on a pure white background? Like, it's my turn now, bro. Yeah, see. <laughs> right, listen, anyway, we're talking about things and things, you know. Ones and the twos with you and me's. Come on now, Tyron got fleas, and then uh, they just bounce through all these fucking lyrics, and it, yeah, it's not good, man. It's not my favourite. <laughs> Is it not? No, it's going to make me well, cringe when I hear it back. That's but. not a good promotion for it. No, he's not got fleas. I don't know. I, 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 know. I don't know. I haven't heard it, but I would imagine it's really good because Tyron Woodley is a talented individual. I tell you, what I do like. I like his mom. His mom, I think, is a fucking She's rock star. Legit, yeah. yeah, for real. Because she was trying to fight Colby Covington, apparently. Exactly. That's <laughs> what I was going to say. Dana picked up on it because she, she's the unofficial interim champ, <laughs> mate. Well, my sister-in-law is from Zambia, and her mom is Mama, like Big Mama. Yeah. Right. So she's always known Big Mama. She's fucking wicked. But then when Dana turned, I was like, "Yo, Mama Woodley was getting into it with Colby." I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Knock that motherfucker out. Yeah, like, right. Just take that yeah. shirt off him and feed him. I'd like him. to watch that. I'd like to watch oh, that. dude, all day. All um, day. What about the other fights on the card? What about my favourite fight of the night? Uh, Pedro Munoz, Scarbrandt. Dude, 
Did you hear why he did it? Do you hear why like that. that happened? Because he knew Kobe, Kobe, uh, Cody was emotional. No, he was a headbutt. He oh, said, he no, said that he, was the thing that cussed him, right? He said he got headbutted, and after that, it's like it just sent him into twat mode, and he was just like, fuck it, berserker. And really? he just, yeah. Look at the punches he was throwing. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun, though. It was, but it, was it just it was that I've seen Cody's. I'm seeing Cody get hit, go for a, a shot and miss, and watch his dead eyes. Oh, I, yeah. So it many was, times. He, he does. He just gets so drawn into the fight. Cody does. It's it, it's that's the problem. It's easy to predict. That's why that's why TJ played it so well. This is like, it. Got him in that state where he was like, "Fuck you, bro." Yeah. Well, it was. I I got it. I was watching the clock because I know obviously we were doing the picks for the collective. And the problem is my head and heart always fuck me over because I know I want to win and I know who's going to win. Because like we mentioned it last week. Oh yeah, Ben Askren's going to pull out a fucking win. And he did. I know we were wrong with Tyron, but the majority of it we were, we were pretty much right, which mm. gets boring. But it was I was watching it and Cody sort of fell into his flow and started busting a few moves at about 2.20. And I was like, hello, we're getting Cody back. He's getting a bit of confidence because mm. it must be weird. After you've been knocked out and you've only been in the first round a couple of times, you want to think... I just want to get to the second. Yeah. Don't care if I'm on my bike. I don't know if it's psychological, but to me, that's what I'd want to do. Yeah. I'd want to feel like I've got another round under my belt. He just needs to get to that point where he's relaxed, like he was against Dominic Cruz, Dude. where he was like like messing around, like laughing at him. Outstanding. Doing his little Michael Jackson dance. But has Dominic Cruz got the power to knock someone out? I don't mean with his comments and dullness. <laughs> I mean with his fists or his I hands. Know. I don't know. Has Cruz got many, many stoppages on his record? I don't, I don't know, just, maybe. But then again, I, I I wouldn't necessarily say that Pedro Munoz is a puncher. So no, maybe, but when, maybe that's when, why he was happy to trade with him. Yeah, but look at Cody. Cody was swinging that he hard. Has, he has eight, eight stoppages on his record, Dominic Cruz. By it. Mate, Cody was swinging oh, yeah, that hard. He was the Mizugaki one. Do you remember the Mizugaki To get him Yeah. Amazing. It, that was oh, Cruz did that. And yeah. Bah, 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 bah. Was, oh, yeah, yeah. But Garbrandt did him as well. Yeah. yeah. Garbrandt did him like faster. A, that looked like a mugging. Well, that's what... trying to steal his watch. Boof. Boof. Yeah, that's what made Cody call out Cruz, if you remember, because he's like, "Yo, bitch, yeah, I beat the guy you just beat, and I beat him faster." Yes, that that was right. I remember. But I wouldn't like to put Cody against. I remember Cruz now you reminded anyone. me. I didn't remember before that. Yeah, this is all that nonsense cod shit that I've got stored you up store in there. It all, don't you? Yeah, for real. Um, you saw some of Cage Warriors. Did you watch the Reese McKee fight? Reese McKee, it. Perry Goodwin. I'm right? a massive Perry Goodwin fan now. From when we said the first time I went to see him, I'm loving the Bronson because. Do you remember I told you about me getting punked by his friend? We've got Kid Mystery's got the got the creepy moustache as well, hasn't he? <laughs> I've got you some Mowax. We are twisting our stashes. How long have you got? Not long enough. When I've I came got... off the boat, though, I've got a couple of photos of me with Aldo yeah. when I called into Nova and Yow. That's Yeah, there you go. To be fair, Aldo looks like the Pringle Man anyway, so I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if he's got a little twist. I've got to cut it off a fight week. You know when smash your legs to bits. Yeah, one day I'm gonna introduce to him one day, and he's gonna go, "Oh, Pringle Man, right?" Do you know I'm gonna? He speaks really good English. I know he was punking us all when he's having somebody else translate for him. I wanted to offer uh, Jose Aldo Connor's web domain because I bought (laughs) www.officialconormcgregor. Maybe that should be the website for the for the uh, full reptile radio. Yeah, for real. Well, I I bought it (laughs) conormcgregor.com with the idea to pay my mortgage off with it, (laughs) right? So I was going to ring Jose and be like, yo, do you want this? And he can just put like loads of shit pictures all over it and just <laughs> troll him on his own official website. But I never got around to talking to him mm, about it. One day. Shame. Yeah, one I might day. ask. We'll keep that one in the chamber. In yeah, case I'll ask Khabib. <laughs> do you want to make this website? Dodgy as fuck. <laughs> yeah. I know someone that'll buy it. Yeah. No, no, we can't do it. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> You're not getting involved. <laughs> um, what got us there? Twists. Twist. Were there any other fights that you want to talk about from two, three, five? Yeah, Perry Goodwin. See, yeah, let's oh, give yeah, let's give him a little we bit more of a platform. Well, we got some clips. We'll throw some clips in this as we're talking about it. Mate. That was a wicked fight. This there's something about about Reese McKee that I, I just I mean he's, he's young. He's what 23, 24, something like that. I can see him being a megastar. He's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. At some point, he's going to have to move up to welterweight because of this. The, I mean, he's what six foot four, six three, six four at lightweight. Yeah. And I just I just feel like at some point very soon he's gonna he's gonna a bit like like um, what's his name, uh, Vic James, James Vic. Vic yeah. yeah, kind of that sort of build. Minus and his in last fact, there's somebody else on this card come up this weekend that's got a similar build. You know, uh, Rocco Martin. Yes. Um, he's got a very similar build, and he was another guy that moved up from lightweight to welterweight. Yeah. And I, I feel like Reese McKee's best years yet are at welterweight. Kind of like young, Darren Till. Same with Darren yeah. Till. I think his best years are at middleweight. 
I think the more recognition they get on this platform, then they start, you just start training that next level up. Cause that was a great fight though. Dude, it? well, Perry, I, I was saying I got punked by his friend because literally we sat watching the fights and it was when Adam fought. That was in Birmingham, It was right? in Birmingham. And there's a guy. Cage yeah, 99. 99. There's a guy sat at the end of my row. And my mate looked at her and was like, yeah, that's, that's Perry. <laughs> and he had the twisted stash. He had the Bronson do everything. And I went up and he had a, a leopard print shirt on. Of course. And I was like, fuck, I'm going to go and introduce myself because I'm as relevant as fuck. <laughs> Listen to this, brother. So I went over and he went, I'm not Perry. I was like, oh, fuck. He went, oh, but I know him. Yeah. We're best friends. And I was like, all right. Don't show off. Just stunt double. I'm here with Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm his stunt double. Yeah, I'm his stunt double. So since then, we've been messaging each other on Instagram. And I was just saying, dude, I think he's every time he fights, he just goes up yeah. and up. And obviously, you could see him in the UFC, easy, ultimate fight or anything. But it was I was just gutted because it was his own blood that's trapped him in the corner of the cage. Yeah. That's, See, that, that's the difference. And for like, for anybody that's not set foot in a, in a cage or an octagon or anything, that's the difference between the UFC canvas yeah. and a normal, and a normal uh, canvas. Because most of the time, I mean, the smaller shows, they don't have the budget to get a new canvas for every no. show. But it's like PVC, isn't it? It is. It's like a, it's like, it's like vinyl. It's like a plastic. Yeah. And when it gets sweaty, when it gets bloody, it is slick. Yeah, I mean, I've had I've had problems trying to get back to my feet before. There are sometimes when it works out, like when you're trying to like shrimp away and you can like slide yeah. yourself across the floor. But yeah, the, the good the good thing is that you don't get friction burns on your knees. We were talking about this earlier, weren't we? Yeah, I mean, fortunately, my wrestling's terrible, so you're not going to catch me catch me no. shooting a low single or anything. But why is it okay to have carpet burns? What? Oh, hey, easy. Oh. China's ringing. Well, there you go, China. Not the time. I'm sorry, it's not bro. The time. I'm going to have to bounce you. <laughs> Um, why is it innocent to have carpet burns until you like after before you're 16? Do you know what I mean? Before you're 16, someone see carpet burns. Like, oh, I must be playing football. I was still getting carpet burns after 16, though, playing with Lego. All right, yeah. sliding along the carpet. With a the tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Who else we got? Well, we've not talked about the main event. We should probably talk about the main event. Yeah, I'm just looking well, through. And, I'm Smith. sure there was more. That, like, hold on, yet. Yeah. So. We haven't spoke about Usman either, have we, really? No, we haven't. That was a, a solid performance. Well, we have talked about him a little What bit. do you want to go for first? Do you want to do Jones and Smith? Go on. Do it. Unfortunately, Anthony Smith fell into the trap that most people fall into against John Jones. Yeah. Um, and that's no fault of his own because Gustafsson and many other fighters have fallen into that same trap. But he, he got caught in that sparring rhythm of Jones where he didn't ever feel really like he could fully step out of it. No. Every time he did think about doing something, Jones would interrupt his timing. Yeah. And I just don't, I think he never got started. No. The, the thing is, a performance like that is going to fuel him massively for future fights. Did you see the front kick, how close it was a couple of times? Yes. Jesus. Right under the chin. Dude, like literally. Maybe that's a fight. Maybe we get to see uh, Anthony Smith against Thiago Santos in a rematch. I thought you were going to say Vitor, but yeah, fair enough. Vitor. Has he not signed for one? I don't see that the headline. Yeah, and he's also. Have you seen his pre Usada, post Usada? Yeah, mate, it looks like someone's let the air out of the line. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And wrote Jesus somewhere on it. Fucking hell! <laughs> Sponsored by Sky, deflated Lilo. Oof. <laughs> yeah, it's not good, is it? I, I don't know. The problem was Anthony Smith said all the right things, mm. and this is what I was saying on the podcast of the week. It's not that I've got anything against John Jones. I think he's fantastic, but I like to see someone get rocked. I like to see that, even like with Askren and Lawler. To be fair to Askren, he took a fucking licking and he came back. He mm. wasn't dead. He wasn't out of it. And that's impressive. So you, you like him more because Yeah, I've got more time for that now. Because but Robbie's... Who, who does that to John Jones though? This is what I mean. Because even beforehand... Yeah, exactly. Thiago it's going to be... Santos. I don't know. It's going to be one of those insane Johnny Walker knees or something. Someone throws something outlandish because yeah. the problem is Anthony Smith is he's been in this game for a long time. He's been cut before. He's come back. He's had losses... And the problem is with that, he he spoke, he said all the right things. He got me convinced that there may be a chance. Now, I'm not saying that as a dumb and dumber reference, but you're telling me there's a chance. So the, I was I was almost excited to think this could be it. And then John Jones just came out and just put on an absolute clinic yeah. of like, I'm gonna, I might try this, I might try then, that. The problem is like, let, let's let's think hypothetically. Let's say if John, uh, Johnny Walker gets the next title shot. Okay. He comes out in the first round and he does a flying knee and smashes John Jones in the side of the head and knocks him out. Yeah. No one's going to be convinced that in a rematch he would win again. Much like when Matt Serra knocked out GSP. Yeah, yeah. Because the kind of knockout that beats John Jones has got to be one of those crazy 
like you know, like Faber and Brown, shot. something yeah. like that. Ridiculous. The only way someone's going to feel genuinely like John Jones has been beaten if someone does a like Kamaru Usman. Usman did to Woodley, yeah, where he just shuts him down in every range. But even with that, you still say, I just don't know who does that. And but but even with Kamaru Usman and Tyron Woodley, you go, that wasn't mm-hmm. Tyron Woodley. DC at heavyweight though. I mean, does maybe. Like, but I didn't think DC would have knocked Stipe out. No, I didn't. But I think maybe because he's not weight cutting him, maybe he's got more power at heavyweight. What is it Joey Diaz calls, calls him? Steo pitch. Steo pitch. <laughs> I want to see that Steo pitch. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. I'm disappointed we've not seen Stipe fight for a while. But we've got a heavyweight yeah. fight this weekend, haven't we? I, f- I just keep feeling bad for Stipe every time, that, every time someone says something to him on Instagram or Twitter, his wife jumps in first. And I'm not saying that you don't have someone stick up for you, because that's all right, but... You are the most winningest heavyweight fighter in UFC history. Mm. And you, yeah, I just feel, and it, look, each their own. Yeah. It's always my parents. They're always arguing. Yeah, well, I've seen, I've seen Nana so Barb jump in. Yeah. My mum did call into, I think it was Ariel's show one time. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they What clipped. did she say? I don't remember. Someone was talking shit about my teeth. I've got. You know, Castle Grayskull at the front row. <laughs> and, uh, was it Riddle? Was it? Was it, it might have been. I don't remember. Somebody like that. Anyway. Imagine, imagine yeah. being a pro fighter, having a bit of a word, trying to get some fight started, and then mum rings in. He goes, "Oi, you've got nothing nice to say. <laughs> Don't say it at all. There's no need for this. Be yeah. nice. To, be nice to bad people. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Kindness yeah. costs nothing. Yeah. Oh, mate, I went to college with a dude, and he. You went to he, college. Yeah. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. It was bad. Uh, it's been knocked down now since Biohazard. Okay. And I went to college with a, with a guy called Sweet Chuck and he was one of the nicest guys in the world. He's about three foot tall, mad gay, loved, loved college, loved the, the art course run. He was fucking brilliant. And while we were there, because when I was at school, it was back in the day, like 90s, there wasn't many people out at the time. So when I got to college and there was like loads of, a mix of people. And so we're all hanging around together. Everything was cool. And I never thought anything of it. And we went into this shop, into the depths of fucking Derby, which was horrible. And while we stood there, these blokes are like giving him the dead eye. And they look, they were quite big lads. And obviously they were just fucking idiots that, that weren't comfortable in their own skin. So they thought they'd start a bit of problems. So there I am, like five foot one, like three stone wet through. Knuckle dusters in your pockets. Knuckle dust in my pockets, <laughs> like shit in my pants, thinking, oh my God, what is going on here? And Sweet Chuck wandered straight up to them, looked them head to toe, turned to me and went, shaggable and walked out <laughs> and I was like what the fuck they were that stunned they didn't do a thing I was so scared my ass was doing 50p 20p it was horrible but it made me think of it because he was one of the most aggro people I've met like he'd he'd walk through a door hold it for someone and they'd just walk through and he was the biggest queen he'd turn around and be like manners don't cost anything darling yeah. they're like yes <laughs> Fuck it. There's something about that type of dude shouting at you that you've got literally no combat. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You've yeah. just been a dick. Yeah. And now you can't even own it because, you know, whatever you say to them, they're going to be like, I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Sweet Chuck. I don't know where he is. Yeah. I've not seen him for oh. years. Call into the podcast on 09497 774. Anything that you want to talk about with Kamaru Usman? What about Mark Goddard's getting some shit about the stand-ups? Um, I've discussed it with Mark. I think the f- the first separation up against the fence in the third round, I felt like Kamaru Usman was probably doing enough to be left there because I could see his game plan was just a weird Siren would yes. be out peppering him with shots. I think, but he, the, the, the following ones I had no problem with. Uh, go on. Are you going to get yourself in trouble? No. Go on. What are you going to say? I don't remember. You do? No, I do. It was about the uh, the stand up because there was a stand up. There was a point where like um, Dominic Cruz was talking shit about Goddard's wrestling. Third round, was it third round? End yeah. of the third round. Yes. And Goddard stood them up, and we had about about a minute and ten left in the round. Yeah. And that was the best thirty the best, seconds yeah, of the fight. Yeah. Had we not got that stand up, we wouldn't have got all those. Uh, what all did those Dominic Cruz have to say about it? I don't know. Something beige. Oh, that wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> the thing is, I want to see him fight Mark Goddard now. Oh, Open dude, rule. You imagine? Combat jiu-jitsu. Open hand slaps only. But the problem is, Mark's got that issue with hearing people chew. And I think if he got his hands on Dominic Cruz, it would sound like him crunching up a bag of crisps. <laughs> because of how, how, how brittle how and is, how fragile. Yeah. It'd just be like someone stamping on a yeah. bag of Monster Munch. Just the glass. Oh, dude. Mm. Well, the thing was, I thought Mark seemed slightly more eager than normal. On a, It wasn't necessarily on the actual amount of stand-ups, but it was the amount of times he mentioned it to the fighters. And majority of time, people won't hear that. 
They won't even pick it up. But when Joe or Anik or Cruz pick up on it and start kicking off about it, it's almost like they're, a, they're whenever you hear a commentator or an analyst badmouth a decision, sometimes it's one of them. It's like when um, when Smith caught the knee to the head and Joe just went on to a no, 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 yeah. no. It's one of them where you can't always be that impartial because mm. it's you, you're showing your true emotion. Yeah. But the problem is when well, they start that, that, that badmouthing Joe, him. That was Joe wanting the fight to, to continue. He wanted, to, yeah, he wanted yeah. to see more. Whereas when it was like the stand-ups, they, it was like a discussion between lads at a pub having a couple of pints watching the fight. Like, fucking hell, oh, it's a bit mm. fucking... The, they are the, fighting. Just while you mention the knee, it's a good point to talk about it. In in Jones's defence, had that fight been in a different state, that would have been a legal knee. Yeah. Because it was two feet and a hand on the floor, three points yes. of contact. Tripod. Nevada need to change that. Nevada need to get on board with the new rules. It's it's crazy that we like like the Nevada State Athletic Commission is like the standard Give for birth athletic. To it. Yeah, yeah. But now they're not budging on that rule. I don't get it, mate. It's nuts. Like so, it's difficult for especially with with John Jones, who's been he's been out for a while. He he's been out. In fact, I bet he was out while that rule rule change came in. Yeah. So his his current career under the new rule changes. I mean, he probably where was the Gustafson fight? That was California, wasn't it? The, the second one? Yeah, the second yeah, one. Yeah, it had to move, didn't it? Yeah, so and I'm sure California have adopted the new rules, which means that that would be a legal yeah, knee maybe. in California. Yeah. So then John Jones was like, oh, I can use knees to the Smash. head, and then didn't switch that off in his brain for uh, for Vegas. It just doesn't make sense that they've not got, got on board with it, though. No, it's, it's, it's always tricky, especially when there's different rules for different places, because mm. as much as... Oh, I'm dude. all about it. I don't always remember where yeah. we are and what it is, but it made me. It was interesting when Dana was like, "I'm glad that he didn't take the championship that way," and I was like, "Yeah, it's a bit wormy, wormerton." But I don't know. Like, if you're actually hurt, <laughs> that's good. like I've never really seen. Yeah, fair play to Smith though. And, and the thing is, as well, like, and in my, myself in that situation, if I'd been caught with a knee to the head, and if that knee to the head would have been legal in California, I, I wouldn't. That for me would have been a victory. Because yeah. like that's, I, I want to compete under the most open rule set. I exactly. Can. Yeah. So if that landed and caught me and knocked me out, always enough to finish the fair fight, enough. then yeah. fair enough. And he keeps the belt. Yeah. It, it wouldn't. Anthony Smith wouldn't have wanted the belt either way, whether, whether the fight had been no. stopped there or not. I just want to see Anthony Smith catch something like that on Jones, even not to finish, not <laughs> not an illegal knee, but something. Yeah. As that important. elbow was nice from yeah. Jones. Wants it. Smashed his nose. Mate. So many. I'm bits. interested to chat to to Anthony Smith and see see how he's feeling after that. Yeah. Where he stands. What, yeah. I'm interested because he, he's still in. A, I mean, he's had so much experience, but he's still kind of in the beginning stages of his this career. This is it. He's way, he only just found out like moving weight made a big difference. Yeah. And if you'd uh, moved weight earlier, maybe you wouldn't have had the 14 losses. Right. Do you maybe know maybe I mean? that's. I'm telling you, there's the rematch. There's the rematch. Yeah. Anthony Smith, Thiago Santos. So. And then if Santos wins, then he gets a title shot. Yeah. One thing I was going to mention on uh, Usman is the with the with the Mark thing. One thing he did say, he shouted. This is a fight. It's a fight, yeah. Which I think that's what kicked them off about saying, you don't know what wrestling is. Yeah. It did seem a strange thing to say, but I don't know if it's just because he was just, not stalling, but he was just dominating him. He was yeah. just doing that thing. And to be fair, he, he looked like he was making Tyron uncomfortable the whole time. Mm-hmm. I just don't think, I, I don't think like it, it was a fair fight at all. It didn't seem like Tyron had shown up. No. So I'd, as much as, Give Kamaru's been all the props. Yeah, he's amazing. Did you hear Din Thomas going ape shit at Tyron in the yeah. corner? Yeah, and and the commissioner kept leaning in and telling him not to swear. Oh, did he? Like, From round one. That's another problem with 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 Vegas. That's it's it stresses me out when the athletic commission commissioners are, are in the octagon. Yeah. At no point in any other fight, at any other circumstance, when we're outside of Nevada, are there problems in the octagon? Yeah. Like corner teams can quite easily get themselves in and out. Yeah. As soon as they come in, they're like pushing and shoving the fighters around and dragging them off the octagon and that kind of thing. Just did just you see the one? Out. Who was the one in Bellator? Who was the Irish kid in Bellator? And he won, and his mom came in, and he went to embrace her, and one of the officials grabbed his mom. Just James not, not yeah, James Gallagher. He, he, he didn't grab her up like he was going to choke her out, but he sort of put his hands on her hips as if to say, "I don't know why they're always trying to stop people celebrate." Even on the cage, it's like, do you want to get down? It's like, yeah, you've got your hand on my leg. You've, you've ticked your box. Fucking chill right. out. I'm celebrating, bro. But she, he went to grab James Gallagher's 
mums yeah. like just and he turned out I was like that's my fucking mum don't <laughs> fucking touch her and I was like easy <laughs> just I could just imagine going absolutely yeah, yeah crazy it is weird I, I I hate to see a, somebody's celebration stifled as well you know when like someone's real upside excited and they they run up the stairs to the octagon and then someone yeah. at the door st- like stops them and they're like oh I've got all this energy I want to be in there <laughs> yeah. to celebrate and they're like, like reaching horrible. over the top to like yeah. come to me <laughs> yeah come to me jungle friends <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, I don't know. It's when, or when it goes wrong. Was it Mark Munoz? Was it Munoz? Who jumped on the cage halfway through? It wasn't Munoz. It was, uh, what's his name? Do you remember when Rick Mark Stump. Coleman, do you remember when Mark Coleman won the Grand Prix in Pride? Yeah. And he ran up to like, to like jump onto the ropes and just kind of <laughs> just fell in the straight heat. through. Yeah. So, where's we'll he gone? That in. We'll put that in. I'm, I'm going to grab that. It's a great, class. it's yeah. hilarious. Well, it's the way he runs. Yeah. And then he's just like, where's he? Especially, like a because he's a, especially because he's a hulk of a man. Yeah, he's I massive. Mean, he's huge. Yeah. And he just, the ex... Who was it that ran into the fence? Uh, it was who's Come it? Come on, brain box. Yeah, it was Jeremy Stevens. Was it Jeremy ah, Stevens? Just, ran and just into ran the in fence. with his arms down. <laughs> what the fuck? That's painful. Yeah, almost like BJ. That's almost when he's as bad as the. the uh, yeah, exactly. That's almost as bad as the Johnny Walker uh, caterpillar running into the fence. I mean, you could open yourself up doing that. Yeah, I mean, what do you reckon that's going to stop now? Jack and Dana's. It's one of them. Like when you have kids, you say, "I've told you five times now. If you break your leg, don't come running to me." And then they break the leg. You know, nah, fucking told you. They'll put it in the contract. They'll, they'll no, more the contract. no more worm kick. No more. No more breakdancing celebrations. Checking Johnny Walker. No back. It's not a fucking worm kick. They'll have. <laughs> no, what they'll have is they'll have um, two commissioners with a trampoline. One of those little comedy trampolines. <laughs> a trampet. You know the ones that used to catch people out of yeah, yeah. burning buildings on. On Dumbo. And any time, like John Dodson does a backflip, and they're gonna catch you on the trampoline before he <laughs> lands on the canvas. <laughs> It'd be yeah. like fucking the beginning of Drop Dead Fred, though. You know when he pops out of the Jack in the Box. <laughs> I love that movie. Mate, we watched it with the kids. We the lost day. Keith Flint, didn't we? We were going to talk about that Today. On the podcast. Oh, all right. We're going to dedicate this podcast to Keith Flint. Yes, well, I told you the story about my brother turning up at the bank when I got him a job there and he had side hawks. Yeah. Yeah, nice that's one, Will. Gonna, that's not going to help a bank job. Not one bit, man. I used to love, I used to love that. But Prodigy were one of the first bands that got into all the, the heavy metal magazines without being a heavy metal band. What about people that called them Prodigy? Prodigy, yeah. It's like saying Ucula nuclear <laughs> or the other one the one that I, I can't be doing and this is hang on a minute this is this is, like Mark this is, oh, it is Go it is uh, did, I, did I call out the fight disciples on this the other week because they say this all the time asterisk it's not asterix asterix is the little the An little goal, the little, the little, little man yeah exactly little he's a comic book character yeah asterisk risk asterisk asterisk not asterisk well I didn't know that's one of my pet hates I didn't know nuclear it was, it was the George Bush couldn't say nuclear. No. And, and he, he was, he he was facing, the yeah, he had the finger on the button. Nuclear? Oh, no. Maybe maybe it's like when you keep saying a word like tarmac or something like that. The more you say it, the less it makes sense. But I didn't know it was the nth degree. Nth. I thought it was the eighth degree. I didn't know what one to seven was. You know? They were pretty fucking bad. But this, <laughs> the nth degree, the eighth the degree, nth. fucking hell. Eighth. One to seven. We don't want to even talk about I don't that. even want to know. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah. One for sorrow, two for yeah. joy, three for a girl, all that shit. But the nth, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah, but I'll, I'll what, publicly, publicly hum- humiliate myself. Here's, here's one for you. Did, did you say my mum listened to the last podcast? Oh, man. So here's one Here's one for my mum if she's listening. She's got this far in without turning it off because of all the cussing. We, she, we've not been back. I've been editing myself a little bit. <laughs> you, you have. Yeah, to yeah. be fair. There was a saying that my mum used to say, and I, I just couldn't get my head around it. It made no sense to me because she would refer to, you know, like if I wanted something, and it was like, no, 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 like, like, like money issues, money yeah. matters, making ends meet, right? Right. Okay, making ends meet. I always used to think my mum was saying making hens meet. Like two female Can chickens. Can I have some Lego? Like, hang on. Fucking on, get the chickens. <laughs> like, if what? we get these two female chickens to meet, then that will be the song. What are they doing? Making They're making the Lego happen, bro. Making hens meet. Mate, my mum used to... The problem is, I've always been quite sarcastic and quick <laughs> really yeah and, I don't, and I, I'm not blowing my own trumpet but it, like I wasn't good at learning things but I would be quite snappy that's why I always concern me when people are like Connor's the best in the game he's the best brain and he's like no you're just not caught up to banter <laughs> you're just not on the same that was like, your British all day, every day. Oh, this is it man and it, it's we, late well I mean it was happening this morning at the gym that's, it's just standard <laughs> it's like with the Jeremy Stevens thing when Connor shut him down all he had to say was when Connor said who the fuck is that guy he's got ask your mom. To me, that's a good yeah. comeback because then Connor's got to come back. But my mum got me into a lot of problems because she, um, I won't say she was physical, 
but she's got a good Wanna right hand on her. <laughs> she's got a good right hand. <laughs> My mum could literally, she, why are you talking to her? If you give her lip, she could take her slipper off, hit you with it and put a slipper <laughs> back on before you know what, what, what's thrown. But she used to say things like, and I'll tell you this for free. And I'm like, because you'd answer that. You're like, how much would it normally cost? <laughs> and she's like, what did you say? Nothing. <laughs> yes, she did. Yeah. But like, things like that, I'll tell you this for free. But I find myself doing it with the girls now. Yeah. I'm old as fuck. <laughs> old as anything, Elaine. Sorry. <laughs> Dude. Are we done with 235? I don't know. Who Should else is on there? Who have we missed? Who? I think we've talked. We've you talked haven't said that. Zhang Wei I haven't mentioned Zhang Wei Li. She's very impressive. She's very impressive. She deserves a, a mention. Of, I'm a big fan of hers. I called one of her fights. I think it was her second fight in the UFC. What number does she take now then? Because I know the rankings don't mean anything. Well, what was Tara? She was like seven. She was, yeah, seven, she was seven and Zhang Wei Li was, was she 14, 15? Yeah. So I mean, she, she, she go three you've or got to well, you got to move her up to sort of near a ten, really. Easy. Tisha Torres has got to drop down. Yeah, mm. I could take that. I'm excited to see her, but that's just that is the tip of the iceberg. There we go. There's another. There's another. Oh, we've got mum references. Never, never sure for days. whether they were talking about actual icebergs or or the ve- or the uh, salad vegetable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Performance Institute's opening very soon. Which one? The one in Shanghai. Not Japan. Not, it's not in Japan. <laughs> I love that. It's not in Japan. It's that like, I know. I will. I will always tell you that I'm. I'm not. I'm not that smart with things. But I know that Japan and China are different. <laughs> Shout out to Dana. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. Don't mention it. Don't mention it. Um, no, that is going to be good. It's like four times the size of the one in Vegas. And Zhang Wei Li is 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 just is an example of one of the many many fighters that are going to be coming out of China very soon. Like all of the, particularly the lower weight classes, like 125, 135, 145. If the UFC are going to resurrect the flyweight division, it's going to be through the the Shanghai Performance Institute because they've got some wicked fighters. That'd be they're good, just, man. They're just in the lighter weight classes generally. See, I've got no problem with them bringing the WEC back. You know, I you, enjoyed the WEC. Yeah, even if they just bring it back as it was, blue gloves, and just yeah. have the lighter weights, it doesn't take anything away from it for me. Mm. Because even just as a se- like as a secondary league, yeah, I don't know? even know why it's an issue. Why why it's even a conversation to take a, a division away when there's enough people in it to have a fight every now and again. Yeah. Just, I'm not even I'm not even bothered if the division doesn't have a title. No, I'm happy with the occasional fight. I, I, like we're 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 all a bit caught up in the rankings thing, and and like the numbers on pay per views have proved that. It doesn't have to be for a world title. It doesn't have to be, um, you know what I mean? It doesn't it's have to be. About it doesn't, belt, no, no, it's not. I mean, like, you know, uh, McGregor against Diaz for for a good example. Dude. There are a lot of super fights that you could make that have nothing to do with yeah. titles. Like the, the Holloway Poirier fight. Would I would argue that would sell just as many uh, pay per views. Is it a pay per view? It isn't. It? I think it is. That would sell just as many pay per views if it wasn't an interim title fight, just because it's a good fight. Yeah, I think the I think the interim title fight is more of the enticement for the fighters than anything. What do you think about the Kamaru Usman Kobe Covington fight? Are you? Is it going to be I another wrestle? Usman, I think so, but I think Kamaru Usman is just slightly better than Colby everywhere. I think he's slightly stronger, slightly bigger, slightly more persistent with his wrestling, a bit tighter, a bit tidier with his technique. Did Kamaru Usman's striking look a bit? Crazy. I know he was tired. He done, has he done like three rounds at that point? He, he, he caught a, him a couple of times. Yeah, but he then, landed over 100 body shots. Oh, the body shots. He's mm. striking when he was literally just holding him yeah. was insane. It, Love yeah, a foot stomp. Yeah, smashing mm-hmm. him to pieces. But when he was when he was actually free free swinging, mm. he, he just looked a little bit... Yeah, like, I just someone think, like Darren Till could time that. and For sure. But I think he was just doing that to close distance. And then the problem is, if you've got someone like Usman... You, you're, you're covering the crazy shots, but at the same time, you know you're thinking, where's the level change the coming? So you don't want to drop your hands too much, but if you do, then those shots, they do hurt because he's throwing them with, you know, with conviction. But I, I, I just, I don't feel like he was trying to strike with Woodley. I think he was trying to get inside. And you, you'll notice as well that like, if the fence is in front of me here, he was always forcing Woodley to move towards his left. Yeah, carrying with, it. Yeah, away from his power side. But at the same time, I think that was because he felt like he could at least get Woodley to overextend with his right hand so he could... Take him down. Yeah, force him up against the fence. Do you think Tyron Woodley's a bit bored? You remember when Matt Hughes said, when he lost his belt, and he was like, oh, thank fuck. Oh, I, thank God. Sorry, maybe. mate. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think he might be right at the top of the weight class. I think that might be the problem. He's gotten bigger since he first started. Like, if you watch him back in the strike force days... He was in great shape as he always is, but I, ju- I just think he's he's hit that point in his life where I mean he's thirty six, he's the same age as me, you know Younger what I mean? Me, so he's yeah. very young. He's you know he's very young, 
But he's at that point where I think his body's like, ah, oh, not 170 anymore. Like, I think if they brought in the 175 weight class, which you know I'm not a fan of. No. But if there was a weight class between 170 and 185, I think I think Woodley would be there. Yeah, because you know if you put him in the cage at the minute with someone like uh, Kelvin. I'd love to see him fight Kelvin. At 177. Yeah, he just yeah he he looks a bit small. Way, but think. I mean, when you get Bobby Knuckles he, against Tyrone, it'd look like Big Brother, Little Brother, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe, maybe. But I, I think Whitaker's Whitaker's what is he six two? But he's also I mean yeah. he, he's really filled out in the yeah, last few thick. years. Whereas I don't think Kelvin Gastelum necessarily has. I think Gastelum's got the frame to be in between the two weight classes, well to weight. And like I said, if they brought in a 177. You've got Gastelum fighting Woodley for the title there. That's a great fight. And I think they both fit nicely in that weight class. That's also the weight class where Darren Till would be, surely. Yeah, be nice. Mm. Just so they could, it's, it's not such a drop. It's not like you see someone 50 look pounds is a lot. gone. You know? Yeah. And Woodley does look, he, do, he does look like he struggles with the weight class. I interviewed him, in fact, on Thursday on Sirius XM. Was he nice to you? He's, yeah, he was fine. He's, you know, uh, he, but you could just hear in his voice that he was flat. Yeah. Like he was like, yeah, I'm just getting this weight off. You know, I'm, that's, that's that's not where you want to be. Not not week. a couple of days before. No, no, no. One thing I want to say about Anthony Smith. Yep. Made me think as soon as it came on. He came out to return of the Mac. Of course he did. He always does. By Mark Morrison. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about meeting Mark Morrison? No. I used to go to a chippy in Derby with my mate Curtis because they had an arcade machine in there that was twenty p a go. Random. Well, it was a taxi rank, but next door was a chippy, Maplin Street. They were fucking brilliant chips. So we used to go in there and basically we were playing these arcade games. They'd have they'd change it every other week, but it wasn't there wasn't a lot of arcade. So like you might get Street Fighter 2, you might get, I don't know, Operation Wolf, whatever it was, but it was 20p ago. So it made the pound we took into Derby last a lot longer. Yeah. So one day we were stood there and we had a tray of chips between us and we're playing arcade games. And this big dude walked in and went, all right, boys, can I pinch a chip? Took a handful of chips, like literally just <laughs> like bear poured a whole tray of chips just stood there talking to the taxi bloke got in a taxi and went and it was Mark Morrison <laughs> Nicked your chips yeah Mark Morrison so Mark Morrison you owe us a tray of chips at least and, and Randy we'll, Kitchell we'll, and we'll send yeah. Jimmy Wallet around if we don't receive him within 28 days there you go I think that's fair I think that's 28 fair 28 days you've had a yeah. warning yeah or £1.25 <laughs> whichever is easier <laughs> which is probably what his, uh, his back catalogue's worth now <laughs> <laughs> mate well he's still playing you it Nicked your chips yeah. No holds barred on this it's podcast. It's not fair. You stole food. my chips, man. Yeah, exactly. It's not on. Can't do it. But Can't I just thought I'd let you know that. Yeah. That's when I met Mark Morrison. All right. Let's quickly talk, touch on the fights this weekend. There's not a massive amount to talk about. I'll give you a quick rundown of what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, um, Lewis Smolker fight. Max yeah. Nell, that's that's a, that's a that's a fun fight. And Smolker looked great in his in his last fight. It was um, he got very emotional, didn't he? He did. He did. Su Mudarji, I called that fight. I spent hours trying to learn that guy's name. He Su is, Mudarji. He's on the other podcast. Um, that was a really good performance, a very strong performance, and it was nice. It was he was very emotional because it had been a long road back for him. Yeah, but you know, if he wins this one, that puts him on a five-fight win streak. Well, uh, Manny, can't you remember who did he fight? Um, what's his name? The Irish guy. Oh, yeah, Paddy Hulahan. Paddy Hulahan. Yeah, he beat Paddy in, uh, in, in Dublin. Yeah. Mm. He looked yeah. good. He did. That was main event. That was bumped all the way up. Do you remember? Because that yeah. was supposed to be, uh, was it Poirier Duffy? Something like that. I think that. it yeah. was, yeah. But um, I'm also looking forward to uh, Tim Bosch fighting Omari Ahmedov. Like he's, he, so he's moved uh, back up to the welterweight, back, back up to middleweight. Yeah. He wasn't particularly big at welterweight, I didn't think. No. And Tim Bosch is massive. Tim Bosch has just had and those. And a good black belt. Yeah. But mate, can you, was it, um, who did he knock out with those uppercuts? Uh, sexy armor. No. Mm. Yoshi hit. Oh, is it? I uh, mm. oh, will find Johnny out. Johnny Hendricks? No. Head kick. That was a head kick. No, Hafiel it, Natal? No, 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 no. It was. Uh, Josh Damon. Yushin Okami. Salmon. Salmon. Oh, Okami. You yeah, know, yeah. when he was. He got beaten the shit out, out of by Yushin Okami mm. and then came back with massive uppercuts. Yeah. In round three, it was good. But he's another one that's like on, off, on, off. And he's got good wins. I mean, he beat Johnny Hendricks. Mm. My everlasting memory is him getting caught in that, that triangle by Rockhold, though. Mm. Remember that weird, that crazy scramble there? The yeah, and he just saw, it's it almost like he gave it to him instantly. Yeah. It, was, it was round one, wasn't it? But Neil Darius against Drew, uh, Drew Dober is going to be fun. I, I'm a fan of Drew Dober, and he's the guy that um, James Hendon reminds me of. Yes. You know uh, James Hendon fought on the Cage Warriors? The Honey Badger. Yes. Shout out. Um, he reminds me a lot of Drew Dober. Yeah. he's. Uh, Here's well, a fun story for you. Go on. 
Drew Dober and Nick Heinfort in, was it Hamburg? Um, where was it? Berlin, over right. on the Musashi Munoz card. After that fight, Drew Dober was invited to Nick Hines' after party, where he met Nick Hines' sister, and they are now married. Imagine. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful UFC story for you. Well, there Drew you go. Ber- Drew Dober and uh, Nick Hines were opponents on our now brother-in-laws. Mate, that, well, that was a thing from um, a thing. from Cage Warriors with Perry and um, Reese McKee. Have you seen the po- photo of them two sat together? Yeah. Yeah, it was nice, man. They, it was, yeah. No, that was nice. Because it was, was a proper nice. scrap and before yeah. it was a little bit testy, but yeah. afterwards, yeah. We got some good shots of those, those guys, haven't we? Of yeah. course they have. I'm not plugging Slim, it. I'm Slim, just... Slimmer Mystria. Yeah. Slimmer Mystria. They, 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 they're, just, giving us, they're giving us the okay now. It's just an organic tangent. What about Ben Rothwell? Where's he been? Has he been practicing his villain oh, life? Oh, yeah, where has he been? Oh, no, was he not suspended? Something like that. I just want to see remember. I want to see him have a... Derek di- Lewis, JDS. Go on. Make your pick. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up some of these... Uh, it's got to be JDS, man. You reckon, yeah? Yeah. Is he going to dance around and outbox him? What if he gets binged one time, though? If he gets caught one time, that's the problem. The pr- that's it. Because I feel like Kane stole about 10 years off his life. Yeah, and, and his just, hairline. And <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that just that just progressed his aging. Yeah, Sigana just boom, 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 boom. <laughs> maybe that's what happened to John Dodson. <laughs> Maybe he's gone like back two bars. Dude, I, I think I, I don't I think that might be the part of the problem. He needs Sometimes to shave his head people again. look like their hats are falling off. Yeah. <laughs> like, what happened to your hat? That's my hair. <laughs> but Derek Lewis, I don't know. I mean, I made we, we sat down and watched it with the kids because I was saying this guy he's gonna get one punch and he's just gonna kill this guy. Mm. And they were like, No, 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 and obviously he did. But the thing is, JDS is he's been caught before mm. with those massive punches. Yeah. So I don't know. He might. He might be careful and wrestle him. He, I reckon he's just gonna. He's gonna go straight out of DC's book, take him down, hold him down, and it's not reckon, like he can't. Yeah, JDS. Yeah. Yeah. JDS using grappling. Yeah, I reckon. He'll, I think he'll go for the shot. That'd be what about you? What do you think? See. Well, uh, to be honest, I think that he's gonna. I think he's gonna be backpedaling and boxing. I, I think he's gonna watch Derek Lewis in the Volkov fight and think. I'm not going to make that same mistake and go yeah. charging in. I can box him up from the outside. JDS has got really good long range punching. So especially that long lead hook he throws, he actually throws it with the inside glove. Yeah. I, I mean, I, ju- I just think he, he's going to be able to touch Derek Lewis up all night, what? make his balls hot and then probably run away with a decision. <laughs> Although it's five rounds. So again, you could also consider Lewis slowing down the later rounds and getting a TKO. What's Plus the reach he, You never difference? know when his back spasm, back's going to spasm, do you? Well, the thing is, he looks knackered from the minute he gets in there. <laughs> he looks exhausted. and then I would he, be if I eat the stuff that he eats. He's, yeah. He, Man, I'd, love see, I'd love to see him on a on a proper athlete's diet. Same with Roy Nelson. Same I always as, said the yeah. same thing. Roy Nelson would never have reached his potential with with the way that he, he prepared. And that's from someone that used to be inside his training it, camp. It would be interesting to see a Roy. Like, you haven't seen him for two years and he comes out looking like Rockhold. And yeah. Like, so he's only got one win by submission. Who was that? Was Who's that? that? Uh, JDS. Really? Yeah, but that's going to be early. early yeah. Early. Was yeah in guillotine, the, the guillotine. Second fight. I just, I don't, I just, I mean, he, he might use top position and ground and pound, but then Derek Lewis is going to get tired very fast if he does that. It'd be a smart thing to do. I just see JDS relying on his boxing and being more comfortable at range. Yeah. I mean, Derek Lewis does wind up. You can see him wind up. And if you used to, if you used to boxing, especially with, with some amateurs that do throw power punches in sparring, I reckon, I can, I reckon JDS can, uh, can stay out, out the way of the majority of them. The thing is, Derek Lewis lying on his back doesn't punch anywhere near as hard as standing up. Mm. And I think, I don't know, I, maybe, maybe not. I just... Here's something else to watch out for. You mentioned Ben Rothwell, his opponent, Bl- Blagoy Ivanov. Yeah. Uh, he fought JDS, do you remember? He, he came in, I think his UFC debut was against JDS. He's a, he's a good fighter, he's a good boxer. Um, uh, combat Sambo from Bulgaria. Um, have a look at the crazy scar that he's got. He's got I'm a scar like, right there. Like someone's oh, yeah. just... Like, there's like a, he's been lanced. Like there's a bullet still in there. Like he's been, yeah. If we take the bullet out, you'll die. Oh, hang on. Bar <laughs> fight incident. That's on his Wikipedia page. I'm not read it, so I'm not going to get into it right now. But yeah. Yeah. I okay. like him though. He looked good against JDS. I thought for, you know, for well, a he went five against, rounds with him, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. I, just, I, think, I think with someone that's a little bit more reckless and a bit more uh, willing to clinch, I think that could be a fun one. And I think we, that's what we get from Rothwell. Mate, right. the the thing is, the the way that the JDS fought against Taito Vasa, I was well impressed because I thought after the first couple of kicks that landed on his shin, he was out. I thought he was done. And yeah, it's, I don't know. I think JDS takes it, but 
I wouldn't be surprised if Derek Lewis takes his head off as well. Mm. Not at all. So should we have some Twitter questions? Go on, what I questions have we Twitter got? Questions. How do we fix judging in all combat sports? And then they've given us two options. Number one, have retired fighters and trainers become judges? That's Obviously. common sense. I, I think we should be, I, and I've spoke to the UFC about this, I think we should be trying to help fighters that are retiring, kind of channeling them into these. A million percent. You know what I mean? Like we could get Mark Goddard over here, we could get Herb Dean over in the US running... Um, seminars running seminars running uh, qualification courses getting some of these guys involved um, and then number two have actual judges complete basic combat sports training you, you, you want to well, look at some of these judges the thing the, is that hurt himself it's like having a driving lesson of someone that's never driven <laughs> do you feel me knocking no I would go one even higher. It's like being, it's like having a driving test and being tested by someone that doesn't have a driving license. Or has never seen a car. <laughs> because it's like, I'm putting my future in your hands. Have you ever punched anyone? Nope. Yeah. Okay, well, see how well I punch someone. Yeah. Although the, the, the dude that we played earlier, the uh, the commissioner for Nevada, he'd been choked out several times because he said that. in the Really? Interview. Yeah, I liked him. I liked Did his him. interview start I- as far back as I can remember? I always <laughs> wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> He kept talking about the fact he didn't have his hearing aids in. He was like, you're going to have to talk louder. I've not got my hearing aid in. I, I've been around too much gunfire in my life. That's why I kind of, of commit the has. Apocalypse Now uh, yeah. thing. Pimp. He was on the, the helicopters coming out, the carriage. <laughs> <laughs> he was that guy. Um, who would be, oh, this is a good one. From Dan Sanchez. Dan Sanchez. Dan Sanchez. Right, you have to say it like that. Dan Sanchez. Dan Sa- Use that as your uh, your ringtone from now on. Yeah. I would. Dan Sanchez. Who, calling, motherfucker. <laughs> who would be on your Mount Rushmore of MMA? <sighs> Ooh. Just, just Fedor laying sideways. Yeah. In a nappy. <laughs> Sumo nappy. <laughs> Why? Mm. <laughs> just giving it a Ricky Gervais. Mm. Uh, who, would you, who would you have on there? I don't know, man. God. Uh, you, you've Randy, I've got to have Randy. You can't not have Hoyce on there. Yeah. You've got to have Hoyce. Hoyce, yeah. Okay, so we'd, we'd have Hoyce. I don't know, Tito. I mean, Tito was the first really? person I recognised in MMA. He mm. wasn't necessarily my favourite, but... Silly haircuts work. Yeah, this is it, man. Silly haircut. Look. <laughs> Prime candidate. <laughs> Someone said to me in the weekend, they went, you look very current. <laughs> very current. <laughs> what the fuck? What, like, like a dried up grape? <laughs> yeah, you've got a beard and you've got one of them footballers' haircuts. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? I normally wear a cap. I normally... I get no abuse wearing my no. hat because they think I'm I seven. I wearing a cap today. I've actually cut my hair, so... Um, yeah, I could, I yeah, could I just wear. decided to brush you it You always up. wear a cap, so I can't yeah. wear a cap. Yeah, I there you go. I'm, uh, I've got the monopoly. Go on then, Mount Rushmore of MMA. GSP. Because basically, I had a Randy Couture affliction shirt. I had a GSP affliction shirt. So Burn I can em. put both of them up there. Burn them. No, Randy signed that one. Cut the Randy signature off and burn the rest of the yeah, shirt. Yeah, okay. I was going to bring the GSP shirt the other week when we were going to do a Remember That Fight with GSP. Oh, is that right? And then we decided yeah. against it. Yeah. <laughs> do we want to watch three GSP fights? No. We haven't got two days. <laughs> um, so yeah, GSP, Randy... Connor's kind of got to be up there, hasn't he? Just for what he's done to the sport. Mm, is it just personally mine? I'd well, yeah. But what you got? Mount Rushmore's four, isn't it? All right, so well, all right, scrap that then. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. GSP, Randy, Robbie Lawler, and who else? Probably Anderson. You could do. You could do Darren Elkins, Anthony Smith, Justin Gaethje, and Phil Baroni. Oh. And you wouldn't even have to carve it. It could just be a just be a mountain range. You're just, just like, there mash. they are, look. There yeah. they are. There's the boys. There's the damage, look. I mean, look at him. He's- Can you see his ears? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but just with real sketchy tattoos <laughs> on the mountain. Who would your be then? Uh, Hoist. It's got to be Hoist because you kind of can't leave Hoist out of it. I think I would probably go Randy Couture. BJ Penn. GSP. There you go. It's got to be. Yeah, but then you're leaving out John Jones. You're leaving out like Dan Seven. Yeah, but you're you know. leaving out Vanderlei. But you're not going to. But uh, if you were making a, a, a if if they were redoing Mount Rushmore now, they're not going to put Trump on there because he's the current champ. You have kind of got to okay. wait until John Jones is retired. Yeah, okay. I mean, they were all past presidents. I can't even remember who I said, but I will stick with that. Okay. Go on. Who got this, next? Well, this is a good one. This is actually relevant to the fight we were talking about. Reese McKee. Is it time for him to get the call up? Big time. Well, I I think he fights for the Cage Warriors title next. I think he's got to. Well, Terry showed a, a bit of a hole when, yeah. I mean, Terry's a, 
he, they didn't look that much different in size, mm. but it was it was Big Brother, Little Brother. I mean, yeah. he literally he, he, he held him down, and Reese had a lot of good chances to escape. Mm. And against a lesser opponent, I think he would have got up. But Terry was a good test for him. But I think yeah, maybe one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because All there was right. a couple of times where Perry caught him hard. Yeah. So for yeah. sure, no, he, he takes a shot, and I, like I said, I think he's better at welterweight. I, I really do. But I think you know, it, in his next fight or the one after that, he could pick up the Cage Warriors title, and then he's, he's definitely up for a call up. All day. Uh, JT Feral Seven. Where does Cody Garbrandt go from here? Home hospital. Hospital. Fucking <laughs> hell. He Pretty doesn't even answer. know. But imagine this time last year, you were a world champ, making all the money and like demanding what you want and being up there and living the dream. Mm. And now you're on a three fight skid. That's and all via TKO. Not even like a, a controversial thing like Robbie. Robbie's dropped two, but one of them was like, yo, mm. come on. Yeah. Yeah, we can always contest that. I, I think this last one's aimed at me because <laughs> I mentioned Henry Rollins earlier. I fucking hate you. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, th this is from Matty Gunner. We'll wrap it after this, shall we? This okay. one's from Matty Gunner. Shout out to Matty. I actually played his. Uh, He's a friend of the collective. He is a friend he of the collective. He has many of the... Uh, he was one of the first 100, wasn't he? Am I under that? Thank you. There you go. Free promo. Is that Flat Earth, Flat Earth Collective? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Phil Anselmo or Henry Rollins, who wins and how? It's a good question. The question is, is, is Phil, uh, Phil Anselmo sober? And okay. if he is, then I would probably say Henry Rollins. If Phil Anselmo is sober, I think he could probably punch his way through Walking Dead. Um, I've seen him on stage when he's hammered and he's just unstoppable. But Henry Rollins, like a cyborg, like yes, like a like a staggering cyborg. But then Henry Rollins is just he's just a lunatic, and he's a especially at Rollins in his prime. This is the thing. If we talk about both of these guys in their prime, even though Henry Rollins probably gives up thirty pounds, he's got that kind of rabid dog that mentality. Crazy. Clay Guida, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I, I would probably go Rollins on both on there both accounts. There we go. All right, you're welcome. Matt. Should we leave it there? I don't think I've got anything else. I think we're good. I don't know. I think we're yeah, good. Yeah, we're good. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time. Take it easy.